Hey, hey! טוב, ברוכים הבאים, עוד איבנט מוצלח של JavaScript ישראל, היום Maintainable JavaScript. אז בואו נתחיל בחדשות, אבל לפני החדשות. <laughs> אז אני, אני גם, המיטאפ הראשון שדיברתי בו היה ב-JavaScript ישראל, <laughs> אז אני רוצה להגיד שאנחנו <laughs> בהחלט מקבלים גם אנשים חדשים וגם אנשים מנוסים, אז כל מי שמעוניין לבוא ולדבר על זה מוזמן, יש לינק. כאן בסלייד של אתם נרשמים ואז אנחנו שולחים לכם את הנושאים ואתם יכולים להציע דברים שאתם מעוניינים לדבר עליהם. ועכשיו נעבור לחדשות, אז ג'אווה סקריפט ניוז, אז אולי קצת סיפורים, אז NPM, השערורייה האחרונה, למי שלא שמע, לא שעה כזאת שערורייה, אבל המנכ״ל התפטר לפני כמה ימים, וזה מתווסף לתקופה הלא ברורה שעוברת עליהם לאחרונה, אחרי שה-CTO עזבה, ה-co-founder, ה... הסטנדרט לייברי שפרסמה פרסומות בזמן, בקונסול, אז עכשיו גם זה וכמובן גיטה ב... כן, היה... כן, כן. אז בקיצור, NPM זה בעצם הדבר שעליו מתבססות כל האפליקציות ג'אווה סקריפט בימינו, אז אני חושבת שזה כן מעניין, אני מקווה שזה תעבור לפסים טובים יותר. Uh, וחדשות uh, קצת יותר טכניות, אז מי שלא שמע, אופשנל צ'יינינג, עכשיו בסטייט 3, פיצ'ר uh, uh, אחלה, uh, בעצם מאפשר לך לקחת, לגשת לממברים uh, שהם בתוך ממבר או בתוך ריזולט של איזושהי פונקציה, uh, בתנאי שהם לא נ"ל, כמו למשל לואו-דש-גט, uh, uh, למשל מי שמשתמש, מאוד נוח, תבדקו את זה, uh, וגם טופ לבל הווייטס, עכשיו, ממש עכשיו, נחת ב... V8, זה אומר שריסורסים יכולים בעצם, להצ... מודולים יכולים להצהיר שהם בעצם אסינק, אסינכרונים, ואז כאשר אתה טוען אותם, אז קודם תחכה שהם יסיימו את מה שהם צריכים לעשות, ואז רק יהיה, יהיה אבלואציה של הקוד. זהו, אז זה בקשר לחדשות, אז מה יהיה לנו היום? אז מאיה, תספר לנו על מונוריפו ועל קלאודנרי, אחרי זה רועי אושרוב על, על סוליד ואיך כדאי לכתוב קוד שהוא יהיה קרי ונוח. מירי תספר לנו על פקאג' מנג'מנט ואיך הם עובדים בסייבר ארק, גם בעקרונות של סוליד, ואחרי זה אגם, איפה אתה? מסתתר שם מאחורה, יסביר לנו קצת, יספר לנו על איך קוד קונבנצ'ן זה צילו אותו, או לפחות את שפיותו. זהו, שיהיה לנו אחלה ערב. מאיה, את מוזמנת. Um, call our code base um, which you have a lot of product lines in your in your uh, code base in your uh, company so how do we do it in uh, cloudinary so first anyone here any knows about cloudinary before oh pretty pretty good uh, if you haven't know uh, five minutes not enough for me to say anything so Google it but uh, other than that so we are doing image and video ma manipulation and Um, on runtime and uh, we have a lot of products but recently we have um, a problem because we have a lot of products so um, we have a media upload image and video transformation and um, widgets and players and uh, and especially dig digital asset management and in front end side we have these two this is the two main product lines that we have and within these two we have quite a lot of the uh, a product like sub products for uh, for example in widgets we have upload widget each uh, media library widget product gallery each of these widgets and each of the products is the uh, is the separate uh, repository 
and it has its own code base and have its own component and it's not related. It's written on React or Preact, if anyone knows about Preact. And we have the, our main um, front-end project is the Digital Asset Management, it's the DAM. And we also uh, written on React, but they are really stay standalone repository, which means they don't share components, they don't have anything in, uh, they have common thing, but they don't use, reuse the code. So each of the component that's similar, we simply just copy and paste and save it in different repository. And it's hard to maintain because the infrastructure is not consistent. And if you want to change one thing in one repo, you actually need to repeat it in different repo. So we did um, a little bit of research um, through a different approach and we found it's mono repo. So what is mono repo? Anyone know mono repo before? Okay. Um, just recap. So mono repo is mainly for large code base. It's the um, a software development approach that we have one repository only which a lot of packages. Each package is actually a um, software project and it has to be either there's nothing related or related but very, very, very um, loosely and it can share some component between this project or didn't share at all. And some companies, some big companies already use it. Let's say Google, Twitter, Facebook, they have been using this approach for their code base because they have month, uh, billions of code files, uh, files like billions of code lines and a very big uh, repository. Okay, so what, we, what do we like about MonoRepo and Cloudinary? Um, it's really easy to use and really easy to reuse your code because basically you have one code base, one repository, and uh, let's say you have a design system and it's become a separate project and each of the component can be exported as um, a, a package. So it's, it's, you can reuse in different code base and different project. And it's make the management, dependency management easier because if you want to change something, you just need to change in the specific package and then um, update the version. And we have the version control for that one. Um, we have single sort of true because we have one repository everyone at the same level. There's no other way that we don't know. Um, and that's make the collaboration between the team easier. Because now the team have the same infrastructure, same design system, consistency between uh, on the UX and UI design of component. So they don't need to, they don't need to um, look for a different repository when they need to talk to someone about some shared component or they can always um, have shared knowledge and collaborate if they have something need to change in the global scope of all the products. And large scale refactoring is much better because let's say if you have a change in a one API, for example, if you have a, um, a, a API can create items and you want to change the way it return and the value for, for, for in general uh, and then you update it in one repo, but then you need to update in every other repo that use this API. But with mono repo, you only need to update one time, and then we use the tool to publish the package. It will apply to every other project, and that makes the code control and, and refactoring much easier. You don't have to do copy and paste. And how do we do it? So we're using Lenar. Uh, it's the NPM um, tool that allow us to do multi-package control. Um, it's, it's what developed by the people from Babel and it's uh, really good because it allow you to do package control, version control, publish pin back and update in the whole repository for all other package. Of course, cannot use alone, have to do also with internal tool. So we have several tools like script, basically script that we allow to do automation, uh, to, um, to do um, trigger uh, testing, trigger, uh, create template for every time when you have a new component created. And of course, we also have a web pack and on the team that uh, the standard for uh, controlling the, the code base, how to autom automation, how to check the PR, how to merge and how to update the code base whenever someone publishes some, or merge something new to the system. 
And the last thing, this last but not least, this is very important. Uh, a lot of developers think that it's not important, but it is. It's documentation. You always need to get a very good documentation, even if you have monorepo, because even if you have one source of truth, without documentation, you will not understand, or a new developer will not understand what is going on, how to use a tool, what tool do we use. So we're using Storybook to, to, document, it, to document all the components of the design system, also on the script, how we use the script, how we write the script, and on the tool, like what version of Lena we use step by step, so that anyone that new to the, to the team we we'll just go to this uh, this page, this documentation, and we'll have the pre uh, understanding of the whole code base. We we'll have a lot of projects, and um, and that's it. <laughs>